code. All right, guys, so uh, first, uh, I didn't record a lecture for Wednesday. Um, I was going through the material and there would be like a break, uh, a discontinuity. So I'll, I'll record the lecture at the end of the term if, if we have material left over. So today we'll just pick, off, pick up where we left off. All right. Okay. And we are uh, very close to finishing talking about uh, stability, and then we'll move on to, um, you know, uh, dynamics, or what happens when a hull is moving, right? We, all, all we've talked about right now is what happens when a hull is static. We make sure you don't sink before you start moving. Okay, so within, uh, I, I think by next class or the class after that, we'll, we'll get into that. Uh, move, moving hulls. All right, so quick reminder, we were talking about dry docking. When you want to perform maintenance on a hull, you have to uh, get it into dry dock and uh, drain, drain the water. So um, we were considering a generalized scenario where you might already have a non-zero trim when you come in um, to the dry dock. And when you start pumping water out, one, one side will touch the ground first. We said here our stern will touch the ground first because it's riding deeper in the water. Okay, and then we define critical instant and critical period. So now imagine what will happen as you keep pumping water out, you keep increasing this reaction force, right? At the very first moment when the hull touches the bottom, this force is negligible. But as you start removing, as you keep removing water out, you know, you start putting your weight on the ground at this point. So what will happen? This will rotate the hull, right? It'll produce a nose down rotation. So slowly this non-zero trim that existed will um, disappear, okay? And um, we can use that fact to compute uh, the this this unknown uh, reaction force P. <clears throat> so the oops. The reaction force P.
right? What, what does this mean? I take reaction force and set moment equal to something. So let me bring back the sketch for a second. So non-zero trim, right? And uh, if we know the MCTC, moment required to change trim by one centimeter, uh, we can figure out how much moment we need to get rid of this trim, right? We, we can measure initially what was the trim and how much moment we need to get rid of the trim. So uh, that's exactly equal to how much moment P will exert at the moment when you're uh, even keeled again, okay? So when uh, at the uh, end of the critical period, when the ship rests completely both aft and forward on the blocks. So that's what this statement means. And mathematically, it's just, P times L should be equal to trim moment. And we know trim moment is computed as trim times MCTC. All right, just a reminder, this is moment to change trim. by one centimeter. And this trim, we usually call this um, delta T. Okay. And this gives us what the resulting unknown uh, reaction forces. So P is basically delta T times MCTC divided by L. Now, now you might ask me, you know, why do I care to know what the value of P is? You know, uh, fine, I'm, I'm, I'm dry docking my ship, but why do I care about how many Newton reaction force I have? Uh, do you know why, why we care? Let me bring back old stuff. So this is from previous class. When you have a supporting um, reaction force, what are you doing? You're reducing your buoyant force, right? Part of your weight gets supported here, so buoyant force reduces. When that happens, we lose stability, okay? And then we computed all that beforehand. If we have non-zero reaction, our GM goes down. So that's why we care. Um, once you compute this P, you'll be able to, um, determine whether your hull will go unstable, uh, which we want to avoid at all costs, okay? So that's, that's a quick way of computing what your reaction force will be when you come in at a non-zero trim. And, and notice that the larger non-zero trim you uh, sail in with, the worse it will be, okay? So always try to uh, dry dock with uh, as close to zero trim as possible. Any questions? Okay, now I have a question for you. So if you follow the news, what happened yesterday? Okay, what were you thinking? Yeah, the, the Suez Canal is blocked by a huge uh, container because it ran aground, okay? So this, ex this is basically what's happening to it. Um, part of it is on resting on the ground and the other part is in, in, in the water. So uh, let me actually pull up an image and you as a naval architect, try to analyze what we see. Uh, what is it, evergreen? Uh, 
Uh, okay. Okay, notice the water line. What, what do you see? Yeah, the, the forward section of the ship is riding higher than the aft. Okay. It's a half a kilometer long. As naval architects, I want you to look at this image and tell me what worries you. Ignore the tugboat and uh, focus on the container ship, the cargo ship. You say the list angle worries you? Okay, so um, I have one answer. The list makes the situation worse. Okay, any, anybody else? What about center of gravity? Yeah, I was going to say you're, because of its uh, trim and then being grounded, that's raising the center of gravity. It's going to make it unstable, possibly unstable. Yeah, you, you see all these cargo containers loaded up top. That's um, that's a huge problem for a center of gravity. So you you can't uh, just go in with your tugboats and start pulling. Okay, you might uh, cause the ship to capsize. So everything we've been studying, you know, it comes in handy when you try to get out of a situation like this. The ideal thing would be you dig the dirt out from the um, uh, the fore section as much as you can. So try to refloat the forward section uh, and, and regain your stability. Uh, right now, uh, you, you are not as stable as you were designed to be. Okay, so any other comments on this? Uh, okay, so you say you say they are talking about taking off containers from top. Like worst case scenario, if they can't dredge as fast as they want, mm -hmm. and you were saying that dredging is going to take about. Okay, if dredging is going to take weeks, we can cannot have the Suez Canal blocked for weeks. Okay, so they they are planning on uh, that's what you read. They are planning on taking off the containers. Okay, so if they remove cargo, will that help? What do you say? Will it make worse? Will it make it worse or will it help? It'll lower the water line, but... It'll lower the water line? Okay, so remote students help him. Yeah. What will happen when they remove cargo? It will float higher. It'll float. Why do you say it'll float? It'll float higher, you said? Well, you removed the, some displacement, so it, the draft will be less. Um, what you said is correct when you're freely floating. But right now, you're aground, OK? So you're only partially floating. So by removing cargo from up top, what they're trying to do is lower the CG. Right now you're top heavy. Well, not top heavy, but heavy on top. When you remove all those containers, 
the, presumably there are more containers in the hold down below. So you will lower, even if there isn't, you will still lower your center of gravity, uh, which is always very nice because GM, right? When you move G down, your GM increases naturally. Okay, so that that's a very um, useful idea um, to basically try and avoid a cap size. A full cap size would turn the weeks into months because the uh, fuel tanks might breach, you will have a fuel leak and imagine how much fuel that thing carries. All right, so uh, everything we study here, you know, it's necessary to avoid this from happening. And if this happens, what, what to do then? Okay, anybody else? All right, so all right, okay. Um, so that was us figuring out what's the um, reaction force. Okay, we have once uh, we'll we'll go uh, even further. Um, once you know the reaction force, what happens to stability, et cetera. And we'll do several examples to really get this concept um, clear. So let's talk about grounding again. This was dry docking, right? This is intentional for maintenance, but now um, either intentional or unintentional grounding We've already talked about lateral uh, stability, but we'll, um, we'll just make a note here. Um, what was it called? Ever what? Ever wise? Ever, ever wise. Mm, let me check. Uh, it was evergreen. Ever, ever what? I didn't hear you. Evergreen. Oh no, that was the company, the ship's Ever name, Evergiven. Ever I uh, got it. All right, so, uh, when you experience grounding, you have an impact on the seabed or uh, waterway side, which is exactly what happened to this guy. And sometimes this can be intentional. You're making me think of icebreakers. Um, icebreakers, I'm not sure how they operate, but do they ground? Uh, do they run aground? Yeah, their, their bow is designed so that they run the bow up onto the ice and then the weight of the boat uh, breaks the ice. Oh, cool. I th okay. I thought they just use momentum to crack it apart. Um, hmm. No, they raise up on top of it and then break it. <clears throat> So, but then they're intentionally designed to do that. And the structure, when you look at the hull, you'd be able to see how it's different from a regular freely floating hull. Um, you, you know. Right, right. The, yeah, they're specially designed, just like you said, to bow, et cetera, to run up and so forth. Yeah, okay, that's cool. Um, and again, you can compute the reaction force on the uh, ice, basically. Um, how much you need to break it up. Okay, uh, intentional and crew or cargo or, okay, now I can add ice, ice breakers. All 
All right, and when this happens, let me draw a sketch again. Uh, again, we'll draw our hull uh, level, but the water line will draw. Um, Okay, so let me see. Um, Okay, so let's say we've run aground, but uh, one assumption we'll make here is there's no breach. So our uh, hull is intact. So uh, we assume, and I'll, 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 uh, we'll, we'll talk about what happens when there's a breach and you have flooded compartments uh, later. And, and uh, we'll make the um, situation a bit more generalized. So um, let's say um, a novice um, sailor has, um, they have um, basically uh, dropped anchor at some place and the water is not very deep. Um, if the tide goes out, the water level might drop from W0L0 to W1L1. And then at that point, the hull would be grounded, okay? So um, we'll, we'll include that potential scenario just to be very general. So to consider
Okay, let me, let's look at the picture. Um, so water level, the tide goes out, water level falls from W0 L0 to W1 L1, and you get grounded. Now, when you're grounded, you have a reaction force, unknown reaction force right now, uh, P. Why is P important? Because if we know P, we can compute the lateral GM value. Um, so we can determine whether we will go unstable or not. The change in draft at C from here to here happens because of two things. What does P do? Uh, P changes, P is like unloading cargo, right? So that creates one level uh, change in the draft level. Another thing that P does is this is a nose up moment. So that's another source of change in draft. So when we add these two different changes due to the rise in the water level and due to the nose up moment, it should equal to the, um, the level the water has dropped. So equal to this. So delta Z should be equal to body rise, plus change in trim. And we know how to compute all, uh, both of these individually. So body rise is basically, if we know the reaction force, we divide it by TPC, tons per centimeter. And the change in trim, if you know that, you do uh, X over L. Um, P times X is the moment, divided by MCTC gives you change in trim. Change in trim is the, for the full thing, F, uh, four minus F, but we only care about change in trim at this position C. That's why I multiplied by X over L. Okay. So, um, that's a quick way of computing the unknown reaction force P. Um, I'll, I'll show you how we get these terms exactly, but let me mark uh, this P is unknown. Everything else you can measure. So this guy you can measure. Length of the hull we know, MCTC, it, our designer will give us X the X you just measure where we are grounded and distance from the LCF, that's our X. So everything is known except for the uh, uh, value of P, which we can determine. Okay. So uh, again, I'll show you how exactly we get this. Not very difficult to do. Uh, as I said, P is equivalent to unloading cargo. So the upward reaction force.
Okay, and that's the first term or the second term. And to figure out exactly how much we can just, uh, we know the moment we can compute the change in trim. So moment at moment due to P is X times P, meaning change in trim is. Can you show the top part of that page? I'm sorry. Thank you. But this change in trim is for the whole hull. So basically, We computed the full delta T, but we need delta T C. And we just use trigonometry. So tan, tan theta is delta T C divided by X, because this is X. And also this is equal to delta T over L. Great. Unknown here is DTC. And this is where the second term came from. That's the boxed formula we had. Right, and uh, this, we've talked about why this is useful. Let's just write it down. So by measuring
this uh, new GM, we knew how to compute. Uh, we, we talked about how to compute here, previous lectures. I'll just rewrite those formulas here. So GM effective. So either this or You can compute it either way. They'll give you similar numbers. See, the only unknown thing here is the P, the action force, which we've determined from here. Plug that in, you get your new GM effective. Right. Let me mention one more thing, and then we'll do example uh, with this. The um, the writing moment now changes to the effective. This becomes uh, W ship times GM effective times sine phi. Okay, any questions? So conceptually, it's clear, you get grounded, you get reaction force, which is bad for stability. And uh, how you compute all of that is the process shown here. Any questions about any of that? Okay, let's do example.
All right, I've noticed one big problem with several students. Um, you always try to jump to formulas and plugging numbers. Don't do that, okay? Always visualize the problem in your mind first and walk through the steps in your mind before you write anything down. You can draw sketches, you can doodle, but don't focus on formulas, okay? Um, they don't help solving problems. So uh, let's visualize what's happening. Uh, okay, you help me, what's happening? First piece of information, 0 0.3 trim by the stern. How are we visualizing this? Yeah, bow is, um, what? Bow is down. Yeah. You're saying nose down? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so. No, nose up, nose up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. Like no. Uh, so yeah, the, this is trimmed by the stern. So your uh, aft is riding deeper. So your nose up, right? So you're slightly nose up as you ride into the dry dock. Okay. You're given some uh, data, km, kg, etc. But let's um, ignore the numbers for a second and imagine what is the effective blah, blah, blah at the critical instant. Okay, so what's happening at the critical instant? What's happening? Um, yeah, uh, the, um, you, you basically, um, let me bring back this critical instant. The instant when the ship touches both fore and aft, okay? So meaning you don't have any trim anymore. So you ride in with your nose up and then what? What do you do? You, you are in charge of this operation of dry docking the ship. Your ship is into the, uh, into the dock, what next? So this is your ship, you know, this is the fore, this is the aft. What happens next? Okay. All right, yeah, so you basically close the gate and start pumping out water. The water level will start dropping, okay? And your ship will, uh, go down with it, but there's ground at some point. So your um, aft uh, will hit the ground at some point. And then that will rest on the ground. And as water keeps dropping, your nose will start coming down. At the instant when they are level is what the critical instant is described as, okay? So, Always imagine all of this in your head first before jumping to formulas. Um, now we can start plugging in formulas, okay? So what happens? Once we touch ground here, I have a reaction force over here, okay? And I, when I'm perfectly level again, I know how to compute this reaction force exactly. If I know that reaction force, how is that useful? I, if I know the reaction force, I know how, how it affects my roll stability. That's basically what's being asked for. Transverse metacentric height, GM transverse. So that's the roll stability. Okay, is that clear? So I want you to, uh, if you're not already used to it, get make this a habit, okay? Not just here for your job anywhere. Don't jump to formulas, think it through first. Okay, so um, LCF, blah, blah. All right, let's make a sketch. Then it becomes easier to visualize. So we have this guy and let's say, we have AP here and FP here. Uh, 0 0.3 meter trim by the stern. So stern is deeper initially. 
And the trim, we know that how to define the trim is basically this vertical distance. Then let's locate stuff where is LCF is given here. LCF is uh, so here, and that's um, forty two point five meters. Mm, what else? What else? What else? Mm, yeah, I think that's all useful info down. Okay, so. Initial KM when freely floating, initial KG is given. <laughs> so, uh, this problem is actually very straightforward. So now that's when we, are, we were freely floating, that was our GM. So we are very stable, nice and stable. Our job is to figure out at the critical instant, will we go unstable or not? Why is it called the critical instant? Okay, finish writing and then we'll think about why it's called the critical instant. <clears throat> Okay, so now you tell me, why, why would you suppose this instant is called the critical instant when both your aft and fore touch the ground? Think, about, think of it in terms of the amount of force applied here. You're saying the center of mass is decreasing? Uh, so the kg mm, keel to, I mean, if you're not shifting any cargo, g should not change. Think about it like this. So your nose is riding up. If you apply 10 Newton on force, your nose comes down a little bit. What, how much force do you need to apply for it to come down all the way? Much more than 10 Newton. Okay. Is there any possibility of you applying any more force than at that critical instant? So once your level, once your nose is level with your, um, once your fore is level with your aft, then both, everything is touching the ground. So you're not like, partially floating anymore. So you can forget about stability from that point on. But the maximum amount of reaction force you will get is right before you touch the ground, okay? Because that's the maximum moment required to bring the nose down. Um, beyond that, once you're touching both, there's no moment anymore. You're perfectly supported by the ground. Okay? That's why it's called a critical instant. Um, so this is where we will get our re support or reaction. And at the critical instant, we know we need to get rid of this much trim, 0 0.3. So um, moment about LCF is
and this has to equal to um, uh, delta T times MCTC. Just be careful with the units when you work with these. So um, this is 30 centimeter. Is that okay? What happened here? We know we have to get rid of 0.3 meters. How much moment do we need? We need delta T times MCTC, this much moment. And we know who's causing that moment? P is causing that moment. P times 42.5 is equal to that moment. So we'll equate this 42.5 P to 2550. And that'll give us the unknown value of P. So, I mean, uh, ideally we would put P in Newton, right? P is a force, but that's fine. I mean, you can put kilograms, which is basically this 60 ton is 60,000 kilograms. And just again, make sure your units stay consistent. You can multiply by 1000 and by G, but um, um, yeah, that, that's perfectly fine. Okay, now we have P, what do we do with this? We have the reaction force that the ground is supporting us with. What, how do we use this? Yeah, we find the new GM, how much we lose in GM by using our formulas. Now you can plug formulas, okay? So let's see. So GM effective will be Initial GM minus P times KM zero divided by W G. Initial GM we computed 1.4 meter. which means fine. I mean, our hull is um, partially floated, but it's fine. The GM is still very positive. So no problem here. Um, if you got your GM to be negative, GM effective to be negative, what would you suggest to the captain of the ship? No dry docking for you, no maintenance, go home. Get rid of what? Uh, unload weight. Um, what if you don't unload weight, but just redistribute it to get what? How would you redistribute it? Uh, 
Think about who's causing this problem. Who's causing a reduction? It's the trim, right? So there's this trim that results in the peak. So if you redistribute weight, so you get rid of the trim before you sail into the dock, you're fine. Your GM effective is equal to GM zero, right? If you're if you don't have any trim, you don't have any P, so GM effective will be GM zero. Another way you can do it is try to increase the GM zero by moving cargo into the hold. Okay, that's another possibility. So there's many ways of um, doing this. Uh, this is uh, the first formula that I gave you and the other formula will just uh, used to see that the numbers are very close. So, or mm, GM effective is All right, so you would be able to dry dock a ship now? On paper at least? Okay, perfect. So let's do another example.
yeah, list angle by eight degrees. All right, so again, uh, don't jump to formulas, visualize this first. Uh, numbers, 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 don't care. Ship has no trim initially, so we are not nose up or nose down. We're perfectly level, okay? And we were anchored and then the tide falls by half a meter or 0.6 meters. The water level goes down, your ship, you know, if it were deep waters, your ship would also go down. Um, because you have to maintain the same uh, water line in order to float. But there's a sandbar and you get grounded. Okay. What's the, how much stability do you lose? And other things we'll talk about later. So what happens? You, you have your hull and you get grounded at some point. You have a reaction force supporting part of your weight. So you're partially floating. What, is, what, what, what does this do? This is bad for our roll stability. First question is basically asking, what, what is this impact on your roll stability? So first, let's draw a sketch of what the scenario looks like. So we have the hull. Hull is how long? It is uh, 66 meters. So this is our midship. LCF is two meters F. Okay, and if we know that, we also know from the aft perpendicular, we will be uh, 33 minus two. Then we did on a ground where one meter aft of the forward perpendicular. So this guy is one meter. Yeah, I think that's enough to get started. <clears throat> All right. So to find the metacentric height, we need to find P.
We talked about this exact scenario in the um, notes earlier. Um, when the tide level drops, you get grounded, you can find P uh, by using that two term formula we had. So we basically have uh, um, uh, delta Z was equal to P over TPC plus X over L times E times X over N since P is P. <clears throat> Delta Z is the, how much is the drop? Uh, it's 0 0.6 meters. E is unknown. TPC is All right, do we know X here? This is X, right? Distance from here to here. Yeah, everything's given to us. So this is um, 33 head of the half and plus two, 35 minus one, so 34. So we have 34 meter divided by L is 66 meter. E times 34 meter. MCTC is what? Um, 30 ton meter for every centimeter. Hmm. Uh, I'll convert this meter into cent centimeter so things cancel out nicely. So 60 centimeter minus 34 over 66. No, sorry. Always be careful with units. If you had meter on the left side, this would not cancel out with the centimeter on the right side. So change it to 60 centimeter or change everything in here to ton per meter. Okay, once we know the reaction force, then computing GM is uh, more uh, straightforward. So GM effective, we use our formula. It was what GM zero minus P times, what was it? GM zero. Is GM zero given uh, in the question? Yeah, G is given. So this is 0 0.5 meter minus Km
Okay, so um, we found first our unknown value of p. Once we know the unknown value p, we can compute our GM effective. Plug into this formula or the other one. Uh, they'll give you similar numbers. So fine, we ran aground, but we are still stable. So um, uh, not, not a catastrophic situation. Uh, okay, we're out of time. So we'll do the parts two and three next time. And I'll tell you about flooding. What happens if you do breach the hull and you get water inside? Any questions? No. Yep. Is that a question? No, I said no. Oh, okay, okay. All right. So see you guys Friday.